Welcome to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today's video will be a comparison between the Rectangular Turtle and the Steel Dive SD1970 or better known as the 6105 Captain Willard Homage. Both watches have been reviewed by myself on the channel. I'll add the videos at the end of the video. The Rectangular uh, was reviewed not long ago and I've had a few requests from subscribers to do a comparison between the two. Now, if you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button. If you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate the support. And it also, it's also a way uh, to make sure you're up to date with the latest reviews. Also check the description. That's where you'll find my contact details for any questions or queries, and also any links uh, to the AliExpress stores relating to the watches that are being reviewed. The links, won't cost you anything extra. Uh, however, AliExpress gives us a small commission for driving traffic through our channels. And the commission generally goes towards more watches uh, and general upkeep of the channel. Now that we've got all that out of the way, we can go into the review. To start off the comparison, it's a good place to start off with dimensions and specifications. So between the two, the, on my right, the rectangular, you've got the diameter is 41 millimeters, the log to log is 48 mil, and the thickness of the case is 13 mil. The log width comes in at 19 mil. On my left, the SD1970, the diameter is 44 millimeters, the log to log comes in around 47 mil, and the case thickness is 13.5. I've got two SD1970s here. The one on my right hand now is the first version, and this is my personal watch. And the one on the left, um, I've got a sterile version, and this is the upgraded version two. So the upgraded one will come in handy, as that's what the comparison is. I've just got my own one, just to add to the mix. Specifications, um, they are more or less the same. They both run the Seiko Epson NH35 uh, movement which is a hand winding and hacking 24 joule movement which beats at uh, 6 ticks a second these movements are super reliable and for the price range you really can't get any better so with regards to the comparison um, I've broken it down I've gone into uh, detail by detail uh, maybe a bit too much detail but I want it to be quite a comprehensive um comparison i have done a scoring uh method but i won't go into that because looking at it for those uh for you experienced watch enthusiasts watch collectors it is going to be a very very close call one of the main reasons is they both these watches are related to each other very closely the 6105 8000 case on my right came out first it came out just after the 62 mass uh, that Seiko produced and the one after it, uh, the steel dive. So this is the 61058100 case. Now this uh, is by far the most popular case out there uh, between these two already. So off the bat, mainly uh, due to uh, the nostalgic region, reason of uh, the Apocalypse Now movie. If you don't know, this was worn, um, the Seiko was worn by, I think it's Charlie Sheen's character, who was called Captain Willard. Therefore, this watch has earned the nickname, the Captain Willard. Um, so just even looking at steel dive, uh, steel dive sales and just generally on the internet, this is by far the more popular one. And uh, this is sometimes known as the forgotten, um, you know, Seiko. Nonetheless, we're gonna break it down uh, detail by detail, just to give you guys that very detailed comparison so let's start off with the dial the style of the dial uh, is the same across both um, it's a homage to the original Seiko dial so all the indices are very similar there is a slight difference um, that being I think the version one uh, the indices were a lot shorter however let's just address the new version your 12 o'clock index is a lot slimmer um, and is quite like the rectangular. Those are very, very small differences. So we're just going to settle on the style actually being more or less the same. All indices are applied, none of them being printed. And 
both the dials do have a printed minute track second to that the hands um, again similar in hand style almost if not almost the same the only difference being the color on the rectangular on my right um, the hands are brushed the hour and the minute and not the second hand and whereas the steel dive on the left the hands are polished and the same situation with the small seconds hand logos and fonts um, you know so the rectangular the actual logo is applied uh, it's a very small and very discreet logo um, going by the feedback um, from the original video I guess it is well liked and it's been well received the steel dive because the version 2 is sterile the steel dive logo is printed and as well as the font at the 6 p.m again similar situation with the rectangular so there's no difference uh, or anything substantial date windows in fact if you just go back to the actual font you'll see they've both used uh, the color red for the water resistance indication both watches uh, do come with date windows and the date windows are framed with a bevel edge applied frame Re the rectangular one um, ironically the date window is slightly more rectangular whereas the steel dive you'll find it is very square if you go into the color and the finish uh, the finish on the actual dial the, they are both the same um, it's a matte effect it's plain black apart from the rectangular obviously having gold uh, having a gold minute track and gold around the indices and the steel dive having white and silver loom um, both actually come with c1 loom um, i had to make a correction in the rectangular video <clears throat> I, mean, I said it was a c3 and uh, that was my mistake in the actual specifications on the website you know um, it states that it's a c1 loom c1 is not as bright as c3 um, that's all it is but it's still pretty effective this is the loom on the steel dive um bgw9 around the ceramic bezel insert and c1 on the dial and i think it's c3 on the hands the difference is it's quite hard to tell uh reason is i'm in a very bright room um so these have been powered purely by the light in the room however uh when it's a bit darker uh you can tell the difference and they don't last as long you'll find the the loom on the hands is significantly brighter um, than the loom on the dial now if we compare that to the rectangular um, again similar loom you just got the loom pip uh, at the 12 pm there is no loomed ceramic bezel insert and you've got you've got c1 on the hands and the dial um, it isn't don't get me wrong it's not very poor i've seen a lot poorer so it is a decent loom, but C3 is just one better. And both watches come with a chapter ring. And whereas the steel dive comes with a plain black plastic chapter ring, the rectangular does have um, a brushed. From here, it, it might be aluminium, um, but it's definitely brushed. So just on the dial between the two, um, I, I tried to use a very basic scoring system. Um, I'd have to say for me personally, the rectangular comes out on top. But the, the I think the largest issue, the biggest issue I have with the rectangular is um, is the logo. Now, I did uh, men mention this in the original video that the logo is just slightly off center. Um, I had a couple of people say that it's just the logo is... Um, the reason it looks like that because one part of the logo is thicker um, I did look at it again I'll put a ruler down the center line of the indice and the actual logo does sit left um, it might be harder to tell on camera but it does sit off by approximately 0.5 of a mil so that's the only issue for me right there um, other than that I like the dial it's a bit brighter um, and I like the color option as well. 
but there is literally not much between them just aside from color next if we compare crystals the rectangular comes with a domed air coated sapphire crystal and you'll notice with this dome the actual fit is superb it's not actually coming uh, it's not sitting flush by much at all it's barely noticeable so the fit of the actual crystal within the housing in the case is really good and you do have a slight chamfer and you can see that refraction which gives you that appearance um, of a chapter ring now that is quite close to the original and that is a sought after feature or um, something which people like <clears throat> the steel dive um, the original one had a very flat sapphire crystal with no ar coating as you can see and but your upgraded version does have a sapphire crystal it's flat but it sits slightly higher i wouldn't call it top edge i just say um i would prefer it to sit flat or even domed i personally don't like that the sapphire crystal is raised over the bezel and there's not much of a chamfer around the crystal a very slight one so you can't see too much of that refraction effect um, and it does have air coating now the purists amongst yourselves i've seen the feedback on the original video um, you would prefer the, the glass to have zero air coating but that's a very subjective feature because if the if um, either steel dive or rectangular didn't opt for air coating you surely you'd have people saying why is there no air coating um, so it, it's a tough one to call I get it because if you want it closest to the original you don't want any AR coating on there the AR coating does kind of get in the way of the actual dial so both of them in this region um, I'd say they scored the same but I've scored the rectangular slightly better due to just the fit and finish um, on the crystal and it's domed as well so domed crystals generally find they cost just a bit more um, over the steel dive crystal now we can move on to the bezel now both uh, watches use a coin edge bezel uh, there has been a quite slight change from the original to the upgraded steel dive if you want to see the comparison between the original and the and the upgraded one i'll link the video at the end i um, just want to focus on the actual upgraded one through this video um, so both are coin edge bezels and they're both polished um, just overall fit and finish um, they're not very loose they're quite tight um, you've got stainless steel silver polishing on the one on the steel dive and you've got this gold plating on the actual rectangular bezel inserts you've got on the rectangular uh, it's an aluminium bezel insert with the gilt indices and the loom pip is actually subset very flush within the bezel and this is the preference amongst uh, watch enthusiasts and on the left you've got a ceramic bezel insert fully loomed um, with bgw9 loom i don't mind this as, as well uh, i did make a point to mention on this watch i prefer the aluminium yes the aluminium scratch is easier um, and it's not as hard wearing as the actual ceramic however i believe if they went for the ceramic option on the rectangular it would uh, give it a very artificial look uh, just bear with me i'll show you a watch that does use a gold and black ceramic bezel um, which i personally think it would ruin the look but you know you can you feel free to make your own mind up on that so i've got the skx um, homage and bronze by heimdallah and you can see the actual this is the ceramic bezel insert and more than likely it would look like this i would have preferred that even if the this Heimdall SKX had this style of bezel insert. Aesthetically, it looks a lot better. Yes, it's not as practical. It isn't a deal breaker for me, but for some, I understand it is a deal breaker. Um, so between them bezels, um, we just got the one last thing, which is the main thing, is the actual function of the bezel. So both have a 120 click unidirectional bezel. For me, this rotation uh, is near perfection. It's very smooth it sounds nice the sound doesn't always come out the best uh, on video um, but it is very smooth there's barely any well there is no uh, significant amount of back play 
grips really well, grips really easily. Now let's compare that to the version 2. Again, it's okay, but I've handled quite a lot of these uh, and there is a, a massive variation between um, all the steel dive version 2s. Um, also, you get, get a couple of hot spots, usually around the 9, 10 p.m. markers, um, where it just gets stuck. Now, this one sounds okay. Um, there are others that do sound quite tinny um, and they don't really sound nice, but it does get stiff for certain parts. I personally, I prefer the bezel on the first one, um, the version one, but you can't really get them anymore. <clears throat> Between the bezels, definitely the winner for me is the rectangular. Uh, just the feeling on it is a lot nicer um, and it moves a lot more freely. Now, moving on to the case, uh, the case both watches use stainless steel cases and they both got similar finishing uh, so on the rectangular you've got a brushed a surface and you've got high polished around the sides and on the case on the back of the watch it's highly polished also with the steel dive um, 6105 you've got a brushed a face with a polished surround case back is polished and the back of the watch is brushed both cases are really well built, uh, really well machined. Um, the curves are very smooth. There's no sharp edges. I feel for this one, uh, the steel dive, um, it is heavier. Just the case is heavier than the rectangular. And I feel there's a lot more. Uh, it's been machined to a higher degree due to the dimensions of the case and all the different elements and the different edges, etc point just to note on this the brushing is quite coarse if we compare it to the version one the brushing is easy uh, a lot less easier to notice but you can notice that quite a lot on this one um, again there is fine brushing on this case for the cases i'd give it up to the steel dive um, just i think the case is more substantial there's a bit more machining gone into it this is a simpler case Case back, um, the rectangular has the turtle on the back. Uh, I think that's been filled with some enamel paint, perhaps. Uh, sapphire crystal waterproof turtle, stainless steel. Just something on the back. And the steel dive, well, that's a sterile one. So let's look at the original. And I personally, I prefer the steel dive one, but that's purely subjective um, when it comes to case backs. So we won't touch on that really. From the case backs, let's hit the crowns. Um, both crowns are actually quite good. Um, there's not much between them. The rectangular, the crown the rectangular is, is a good grip. It's very smooth. Um, you do have a slight play, but that play is there for a reason. Uh, it prevents breakage of the stem. The screws down perfectly fine, perfectly smooth. Obviously, due to the case shape and the original, the crown does not, uh, it does not recess into the case by a lot. There is a slight recess just to give it a more streamlined shape. However, the Steel Dive one, um, the upgraded version has a fully streamlined case. The crown sits almost perfectly flush with the crown guards um, and it's quite easy to operate. There is a slight knack to it, however. Um, you might have experiences if you've got this watch, when you set the time, you've got to literally make sure the crown is still and then press it in if you just you know, press in anyhow, um, you'll see that the other hand does tend to move sometimes. And then, uh, so between them, we've got one last thing uh, that I'll um, judge on the case is the water resistance. The rectangular comes with 150 meters and the steel dive comes with 200 meters. Now, uh, 50 meter difference, although I suspect they actually the rectangular is more than likely capable of 200 meters. I think they've gone with 150 to just, uh, again, pay homage to the original watch. Uh, between them on the cases, it's a tight one, but I lean towards the actual steel dive just due to machining, finishing, uh, and just the style of it. From there now, uh, 
we haven't got long left let's look at the straps i think both straps there is massive room for improvement the tropical strap it is nice it does have a nice taper to it it's got a few more features um the buckle comes with radune 20 um across there however it does it's very comfortable and it might be strong but that 10 mil taper at the bottom does feel quite flimsy um and when you do wear it on the wrist you've got this little tail end sticking out i would have preferred it to be on a waffle strap i do have a waffle strap however i tried to fit it uh, and because it's a 20 mil um it's it just does not fit and it's relatively thick so you're gonna have to do some uh fishing to find the right strap if you like this this one here uh, there's no issue then steel dive for me they give these generic iso frame very poor straps i think this for a six and a half inch wrist uh doesn't fit you end up fastening it up to here which isn't even um the correct holes they can do a lot better that's why with the original uh sorry with the version one i went with a waffle strap and that's my favorite but i think both cases are very versatile you can try nato straps you can try paratrooper those french marine national straps and even leather or suede straps they, they look fantastic on all of them so last but not least price you've got the steel dive now has been reduced to the last i checked on aliexpress which was a couple of days ago from the actual steel dive store you can get it for around 102 pounds the Redune is at 156 so how do we weigh that up um, between them uh, if i use my scoring system the Redune comes out on top by a point or two and that's how literally that's how closely i've scored it um i'm still trying to figure out the best scoring system to use i don't want to use a large scale just to make it um you know where the scores come out in the 200s or 300s that's ridiculous um, I just want to have a reasonable score but no matter what scoring system you'll use I'd say they do come out very close um, on the different aspects of it there's pros and cons to both as I've just covered personally what I would say and this is the beauty of homage watches I'd say buy both uh, if you've got the steel dive get the redune if you've got this the the rectangular then go for the steel dive purely because of the iconic K styles um, and what they represent uh, and both are really well made pause another question is the Rudune 50 pound better after a long hard think i'd say no it isn't 50 pounds better um because i haven't seen nothing significant between them to make it seem that but the the price the reason for the price uh, more than likely is due to just the size of the brand steel dive are I'd say a bigger brand from what I can see and what I know and they order larger numbers and they sell on a larger scale so they can afford to sell it cheaper. Redune, uh, I've only seen two watches from them, this and Tuna and so I'd say they're a smaller brand with not the same volumes as Steel Dive so that's why you're paying a bit more. Um, it's, I don't think it'd break the bank and I still think you'd really appreciate it if you had it. They do fantastic color options. This is where the steel dive fails. The color options aren't the best with the green, the blue. That plastic chapter ring just makes it look worse. I'll just stick with black when it comes to the steel dive. Um, and that's my you know, comparison <coughs> and honest review um, between both watches. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Tell me what you prefer and why. Um, and then it just gives everybody else the audience a better understanding you might have some points which probably i've missed um but that's that that's the end of the review i'm going to leave you with a uh, loom shot comparison uh, and some wrist shots so thank you for watching see you on the next video both watches are really well proportioned they fit well on the wrist and they are very comfortable to wear even though there's a slight difference in diameter, you really can't feel it when it's on the wrist. For referencing purposes, my wrist is a six and a half inch wrist and both watches sit and fit really well. I hope you enjoyed that comparison and hope you found it informative. I'll see you on the next video.